talking about things I don't buy or talking about things I can't buy currently, I'm not going to lie. I don't give a frig about watches. Never have, never will. The most I care about watches is probably Casio G-Shocks, which I've got a couple because of my streetwear history, my streetwear roots, and the fact that they were the staple and still are the staple for most streetwear people or streetwear guys or people that are into that sort of stuff, especially sneakers and shit. I remember loads of cool Japanese brands having great Bapes, I mean, Bape, you know, Bape um, G-Shocks back in the day, like Bape and other companies too. And the other, only other thing I could think of that I would like as a watch, maybe like is a Jake, is a, is a Jacobs and Co. But I could think of that because of my favorite group, Dipset, Cameron back in the day and that era of um, hip hop artists I grew up on, they all wore Jacobs and Co watches. So I don't watch it. I don't care about watches. I don't really get a bone for people having diamonds and shit. I honestly don't care. It does nothing for me, nothing. The only thing that intrigues me about it is the idea that people are wearing on their wrist, you know, the same worth of as like a house or something. So when I see somebody's tray of watches in a little container with that little tubular thing that they put it on, I'm like, wow, this person has like seven houses <laughs> on this tray. That's pretty wild. And I also think about the idea about, you know, in that in the watch area and the watch industry, there's a lot of people who pay a lot of money for really high level, high quality fakes. That's also a whole hustle itself. The hustle of the watchmakers trying to sell you watches and pretend like it's the only one that was created of that level and shit. Just the whole entire ecosystem I'm fascinated by. But this particular video, big up this content creator, I don't know what his name is, what's his name? The guy's name is uh, Chaddy, Chaddy Alexander, I think, or Chaddy, yeah, Chad Alexander. Big up him on social. He, he does these really cool compilations where he kind of looks at special events and sees what celebrities are wearing. And this particular one that he did for Michael Rubin's White Party is fascinating to see how much the, wa the watches are worth and what they look like. Because some of the prices on these watches is obscene that anybody will spend this amount of money on a watch, you know, and they don't use it for, uh, you know, as a time device. They use it mostly as a piece of jewelry or as a status symbol, but it's still fascinating to see. And notice who's got the most expensive one out of everybody that went to the white party for Michael Rubin. It's absolutely fascinating, this video. Let me play it for you. These are the insane watches worn at Michael Rubin's white party. Jake Paul was there and wore this Richard Mill 1103 that if you wanted to buy, will cost you over half a million dollars. Tom Brady had on his one of one Audemars Piguet Royal Oak flying tourbillon that's covered in diamonds with his name on the dial. Lil Baby wore this Rolex Yachtmaster. Here's a better shot of this gem and diamond set watch on his wrist selling for 160 grand. In this wrist shot is Jay Balvin and Zach Bia's watches where Zach Bia wore a frosted yellow gold AP Royal Oak that'll set you back. 260,000 and up here on Jay Balvin's wrist is this AP Royal Oak concept flying tourbillon in Mr. Wonderful fashion he wore not just one but two watches just a few hundred K on the wrists on one wrist is a yellow gold and puzzle dial Rolex day date and on the other is a platinum Cartier crash here's a better close-up of it Kuzma had on this $300,000 Richard Mill Le Mans as well as another $300,000 watch from Day Batoon called the DB28 deadbeat seconds tourbillon which Day Batoon may have been the watch brand of the night because Michael Strahan also had one on in rose gold and zirconium as well as swiss beats who wore the kind of two jumping gmt a two hundred and fifteen thousand dollar piece that's actually reversible drewski had on a two-tone rolex datejust that you can pick up for 16 grand aiden <laughs> ross wore this ap royal oak perpetual calendar hovered in diamonds that sell for nearly 700 grand and up here on jay-z's wrist is the most expensive watch of the night a vintage rolex daytona reference 6270 where one of these recently sold at auction for 4.2 million dollars if you had your choice what would you choose Oh no, this is just it's one of five. One of five? Yeah, there's, there's four other people in the world with it. Only four? Yeah, four other people. Let me see it again. Let me see it again. Hold on. Yeah, hold on one second. I'll be right back. <laughs> Did you hear that? Jay Z's watch was worth $4.2 million. It doesn't actually look like it either if you saw, if you saw it. If you saw it offhand, just you know, for your naked eye, you wouldn't think it was worth 4.2 million because it, it looks just like a gold Rolex. Yes, it has the diamonds around the edge and obviously in the face, but it doesn't scream 4.2 mil, but that's worth 4.2 million. Fucking fascinating. So just the idea that people walk around with that amount of worth on one particular thing, because usually even, even with chains, they usually spread across a couple of chains, they maybe look a little bit more shiny. A house is a house. A car is a car. But I could never imagine putting the money that I could put on a house into a watch. 
that's what my brain doesn't kind of regulate at the moment i think i've kind of because of social media and because of content online my eyes have kind of gotten used to and started to appreciate what a richard millie looks like because for me a richard millie is basically like a um a high class g-sock because of the rubber kind of strap and stuff it just looks like an adult version of a g-shock so i'm not too mad at that but still would i spend 1.2 mil on one no don't give a fuck but that's that's as far as it goes i'm happy with my casios i'm happy in the end if i end up getting a flipping um a jacobs and co watch and get that done that'll be a cool thing to have just as like a, oh shit i remember when i was a kid and i fucking love these but apart from that i don't care could really care less about watches so it's fascinating to see there's a particular type of rich person rich guys in particular when you have everything i guess there's not much more to buy watches become the next frontier you know that's probably the only thing because it's also a, a cool interest to have because it gets you into collecting um it gets you into maybe learning about different watch designs and techniques and finishes it maybe gets you in a different tax bracket because you get to speak it to different people expand your network maybe you get to travel there's loads of things like i can see why people why men like it it's almost like golf right it's almost like another it gives you like another lease of life or another kind of boom and dudes i always say how hard it is to find friends when you're a guy especially when you're an adult so if you have an interest like watches i understand why because you know there's a community around it there's magazines there's instagram accounts there's forums there's probably reddits and stuff you can go on it's probably a thriving community of people who like to just watch what rich people buy like to collect stuff like to maybe get stuff um what's that thing called repaired you know there's probably a whole entire scene around people who have these watches so i completely understand why people get them but it does nothing for me it really does nothing for me the only thing i could give people props for to be fair is ap ap needs to get a lot of props because i never knew ap's existed until recently um but i feel like as a brand they've really done a big good job you know imposing themselves in the watch industry and become the next sort of like one that everybody likes probably even more than richard millie's i think nowadays people still regard rolex as maybe as number one in terms of that luxury watch area and scene but I think APs have definitely come in a second, maybe close to maybe Richard Millie's in terms of brand recognition and what people want to buy. So you have to give those guys credit for how they position themselves. It's fucking cool. Um, this uh, Cartier Crash Watch, I really like. This again, I, I'm more familiar because of this watch because of Tyler the Creator. Tyler the Creator has got a few of these in vintage ones actually. I think without the diamonds and shit and they look pretty cool. And it's just nice because it's a different type of watch than what you'd see a normal rapper wearing. So I like the design, you know, with the kind of warped um, face and stuff. It almost looks like a watch that Salvador Dali would design. So I kind of like that. And obviously this guy's Richard Miller here, this basketballer. Um, that looks pretty cool. But I, I would never, ever spend this kind of money on a watch. I'd rather buy a bunch of houses in different countries for that type of watch. You know what I mean, you could easily get a fucking nice crib somewhere in Paris, somewhere in Berlin or whatever. Um, maybe a crib to rent out here in London or something. Maybe not the best one, but still. Um, I could never justify spending all of that money on a watch that I could buy on a crib. It's not going to happen. But it's just fascinating to see that. And I bet you as well, that bottle of wine, I'm not really familiar with wine. I don't really drink it too often. But I almost, I guarantee that bottle of wine is also probably worth a ton of money as well. So you've got a $4.2 million Rolex and you probably got wine in a box that's probably worth, what, 100 grand or something? Jesus Christ, bro. I guess at a certain level, when you've got money, what else could you buy? You know, you've probably bought all the homes. You've got home on each coast. You're bi-coastal. Um, you might have a home in Miami or something. You might have a hot, a for, like maybe not. Maybe not on a maybe not a, a home away from the states because you don't want the, the upkeep. You probably just you know splash out on really nice hotels. All your kids have been put through to school. They've got nice trust funds and nest eggs for them. There's not really much else you buy. So I understand why men decide to get into watches because you know I'm sure as much as I love cars. I'm sure once you start making real money, you know, once you st once you drive a bunch of cars, you've driven them all, you know? It's hard to really get into buying, like, how many, and you're only one person, you can't drive all your cars at once. So I understand that, but I just look at this stuff and I think to myself, wow, man, could you imagine? Could you imagine having one of, like, the funny thing is, because I saw the other day, I saw a guy in a Ferrari in my area. I saw a guy in Ferrari in my area, and part of me likes that, because again, 
Cameron being my favourite rapper, Dipset being my favourite rap group of all time. I've grown up watching Cameron go to like Harlem in a drop top Lambo, right? And I think that's kind of swaggy to bro through in your end, in your hood, in your area, a place where you used to fucking do kickups down the street, used to ride stolen bicycles, jump on the bus for free and shit. To be driving on those same streets in a Lambo or Ferrari must be quite swaggy. But it's also hilarious, the contrast of being in a really run down dilapidated area and kind of flexing that sort of money. Like imagine being in the Weatherspoons. Imagine being in the Weatherspoons somewhere in London and you're ordering a pint for like four pound fifty, <laughs> and you've got a four point two million dollar Rolex on. It's like what? <laughs> Your watch is probably worth more than a building. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, that's just that's too much, man. But Jay Z reminding people that you know his money is different than everybody else's because four point two mil is just wild, absolutely wild. But big up him, big up him, and big up the people that wear wear watches for me. I'll stick to my Casios. Um, I bought quite a few actually vintage ones, like old streetwear club ones, especially Bape ones actually that I've been wearing from time to time. I don't mind my Casios. And, and I don't even wear them too often as well because I'm such a sweaty individual that the whole strap gets very leaky when I'm out and about. So I don't like to wear it too often, but man, man, oh man, oh man. The watch industry, the watch scene is a weird, weird place. <laughs> 